So the message today that the Lord um, had me develop was called, I, uh, I entitled it, How to Develop Radical Faith. And in this era that we're in, you know, we have got to know how to stand on the word of God. We have got to know how to press in. We have got to know how to hear his voice, to worship. What are the foundational principles that we have to acquire in our lives in order to, to get through? You know, we're coming into, we've, we've had some, some shaking that's gone on, but we, we haven't seen anything yet. And I believe that with all my heart. But it's not to be afraid. It's to be aware. And it's to understand that God's got our back and that he knows the end from the beginning. But if we don't know and if we don't know how to now even hear and press into the Lord, you don't want to get ambushed and then try to develop yourself in the Lord, right? That's the stinky time. That w what we want to do is to, to learn how even now in this time, you know, we all have gone through difficult situations, every single one of us here. And if you haven't, come up to me afterwards and tell me how, you, how you've done that, okay? We've all gone through stuff. But, but it's through it all. Listen, we're all here. We've learned to trust in Jesus, right? We've learned to, to press and we've learned to take a stand. And when we've done all the stand, we stand. And we stand some more. And what, when you look up that word stand in Ephesians 6, it means to stand on covenant promises of God. He's a covenant God. The Bible says in Psalm 89 that he doesn't alter his covenant. He stands upon his word. He watches over his word to perform it, right? So, um, you know, when I was thinking about sharing today, uh, one of the scriptures uh, I've been reading through and meditating in the book of Hebrews, especially Hebrews 11. Love that book. I've been meditating in the book of Judges about Gideon, different portions of scripture that the Lord has me going back and forth in Isaiah 60 and so forth. But in Hebrews in 12 in the Amplified Version, listen to this. It says, looking away from all that will distract you to Jesus, who is the leader and source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief, and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and protection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne. The portion that I want to focus on right now is looking away from everything that will distract us from Jesus. There's a lot going on. There's a lot that will distract us from Jesus right now, right? It could be COVID. It could be... You know, uh, you know, it, some people are, are in a workplace right now where you're being forced to get vaccinated. Who wants to get vaccinated? Who doesn't? You all have to hear from God as to what you need to do. We can't tell you what to do with that. That's your personal choice. But nonetheless, there's a lot there that's trying to keep us distracted. We have Afghanistan. We have hurricanes. There's, there's you know, a lot of crazy stuff that's going on. But God is not shaken by any of this, is he? We have a God, we sang about him, he's on the throne, he knows the end again from the beginning, and my eyes are fixed on him. My eyes are fixed on Jesus. I'm going to keep my mind fixed on him, not what all the other news media is saying. What does the word of God say? And that's how we build ourselves up in our faith. Obviously, one of them is through the word. All right. So we, we, don't, we want to get away from everything that would distract you, that will distract me. Is there anything distracting you? Is there anything that you're worried about, anxious about? Right. See, we have to go back to always, Lord, what does your word say? Get back. Listen, that happens to all of us. You get, you know, the Italians, we say, we get the agita, you know, it's like, ah, uh, you know, what's going on here, God? And then I have to go back into the presence. We all have to do this. So we're facing many trials, and many, many, many things are trying to get our attention. And the enemy uses doubt, right? How many here has ever doubted, <laughs> right? We all have doubted, but he uses that, and it's a common experience for all of us, and it causes negative and discouraging thoughts, doesn't it? And so it tries to, the goal of, of doubting is to interrupt our faith, and it's a tool that the enemy uses to have us, or to, uh, for us to lose confidence in the word of God. 
And that's where it's like when I start doubting, when I get into that, you know, I'm so focused on the natural, and it's like, wait a second. Lord, your word says in Luke 137 that with God nothing shall be called impossible. Lord, your word says that you are the great I am. Lord, you know, and I'll go through the scriptures, and then it's like the God gives me his holy perspective again, brings me back into alignment. It's like, wait a second. And then you feel that empowerment. Right? Is that happening to you? Right? And so it's, it's what we have to do. I mean, what am I going to do? Stand there and just listen to the lie of the enemy? Listen to, allow him to tutor to me and tell me what's going to happen and get into that negative, hopeless mindset? No. No. And see, so that doesn't mean you don't have faith. That means the enemy's attacking you. <laughs> and it means that we have to put up our shield of faith and say, no, I reject that. Right? So... Again, as I told you, it's a basic word. What does the book of James talk about? A double-minded man, what does it say? He's unstable in all his ways. And he's, uh, let me just open it. He's being uh, tossed. Uh, I've got these pens all over here. Hold on a second. And so a double-minded man, I don't want to be a double-minded person. So let me read it to you here. I want to read it to you out of the amp Amplified. First of all, it says here, if, I'm going to read in verse 5. If you lack wisdom any wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstances, he is to ask our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. Well, how many of us need wisdom in this day and hour? Oh, Lord Jesus. It says we're to ask for it, okay? It says, it, then in verse 6, it says, but if he asks for wisdom in faith, not Lord God, what? And then call 42 people. No, ask in faith, wait to hear what the Lord's saying without doubting God's willingness to help for the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that's blown about and tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. That's serious. And so I said, Lord, I don't want to be that one that's going to be tossed there and about and, and, and just listen to everything and what everyone's saying. What are you saying to me? See, and that's the beauty. That's the privilege that we all have, that we all are his children and he wants us to hear his voice and we practice his presence. So that's, that's the one thing. So don't, number one, don't be distracted by all that's going on. Don't be tossed around. If you're in doubt, listen, this isn't a message to, to condemn anybody, but if you're battling with doubt, then, then what, what scriptures are you standing on? What, where's the word that you have to counter that attack? That's what I always do. I get the word. I get the word and I think, no, wait, here, Lord. Yes, you know, it's good to be honest. If you're afraid, if you're worried about something, just tell him. He knows your heart anyhow. Just tell him. But, Lord, here's what your word says. And I'm choosing to trust you. And then it's, it, it's, there's this supernatural aspect of what God does and he's like, he just, in, he empowers you with that dunamis power, that dynamite power of Holy Spirit in us. It's, 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 it's amazing. And the enemy hates that. He does not want us to do it. He wants us to, you know, you know, he, you know he'll get people to mock you or, oh, you're ridiculous. You think God's going to do this? Yeah. Because he's done it too many times. Yeah. Amen. The other way uh, that we, we, we develop our radical faith, and again, I know you know this, but you, it's, I'm giving the message, you're going to have to hear it again. We fight back with the word, basically, is what I was saying. The word has to have final authority. The government does not have final authority in my life. The word of God has final authority. And my neighbor doesn't have final authority. The word has final authority. What does the word, I have to always go back to what does the word say? What does the word say about my faith? What does the word say about health? What does the word say about doubt? What does the word say about my family? What does the word say? What word, what scripture are you standing on or scriptures? What are the songs of the Lord that you're singing to the Lord in that place that's building your faith up? See, that's what we have to do. What's the word? We fight back with the word. That's one of the ways we can expect our faith to be strengthened. And here's the deal. When we are standing upon the word and we're, we're standing and we're warring with that word, that's our faith is being developed. It's in that place. That's, don't think that you're weak. No, no, you're battling. You're standing on the word, but you're, you're crossing over to the other side. And so when you're standing, let me just, let, let's just get this out in the open. 
So we know that like when you're battling, let's, let's say sickness, okay? And, and you know, we've all been sick, we've all have struggled. When we're standing in faith, that does not mean you cannot take a aspirin or a Tylenol, okay? Now, the Lord may give you direction, However, that's where you have to hear the voice of the Lord. Going to a doctor does not mean you're not in faith. Luke was a physician. Now, there have been times that the Lord is, you know, in my walk with the Lord, and I knew beyond a shadow of doubt God was healing me, period, without medicine, without a doctor. But that doesn't mean every time I've gone through something, I took that same posture, I, I've had ebbs and flows of my faith, but the bottom line is I'm going to trust God, period. If you have to go to a doctor because you're battling with something and, and you feel like, oh, I'm weak, I'm not walking in faith, that's a lie from the enemy. You know, you might as well go because if you're battling with fear in that area, <laughs> that's not a good thing, right? So there's, you know, again, people get really confused about our walk in faith. Now, my goal is I want that instantaneous miracle. I believe that too. Uh, we've experienced that. We had to war. You know, you've heard the story a hundred times and giving birth to my second child. The doctor and everything that they were looking at said he was dead. But my God said he was alive. And, and that voice was so strong in me. Why? Because of the meditation of the word. You, I, we sang that song. I don't care what you say to me. Here's what the word says, and here's what God is saying to me. You couldn't tell me anything different. There was a difference. The first time they said my son was stressed, and I'm like, okay. And they took him, you know, C-section, you know. But I wasn't built up in the word. See, it makes a difference. So, again, so just to bring clarity... When we say, no evil will come nigh your dwelling, no plague shall befall you, we recognize COVID is real. Right? It's real. But it's not going to take me out. Here's what the Word of God says. Here's what, do you believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ? And see, and that's where, again, it, it's, it's, it's not like you're, you, you have a little rabbit's foot here. It's something that you have a relationship with, with Jesus Christ. I thank God for Jesus Christ. And you have that relationship with him, and you're trusting God no matter what. And that, Father, I'm going to trust you. And so, you know, again, we know that God's got our back, and I'm going to trust. But if you have to go to the doctor and take medicine or quarantine, do what you have to do. So anyway, we're, we're good with that? All right, so how did Jesus fight back in Luke chapter 4? Luke uh, when, when Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil came three times and he kept harassing him on his 40-day fast, he, Jesus didn't dialogue with him. He just said, it is written. It is written. And if Jesus did that, that's what we have to do. It is written. Here's what the Word of God says. Lord, I know right now I may be feeling fear, let's say, about something. But, Lord, here's what your Word says. And I choose to trust your Word. You see? That's how we war. And uh, I, I rehearse this all the time. I'm like, Jesus, here's what your word says. I can't look at that. And you may say, but isn't that, in, aren't you in denial? No, I'm not in denial. I've been saved since 1979. I have stood upon the word. I have seen God move. I have seen God in, in areas that I was totally freaked out, afraid. But I said, Lord, my knees may be knocking, but I'm trusting you. I choose to trust your word. You said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I've seen him over and over and over and over again break through. It's experiential. And unless we step out in faith, we're never going to develop it. We're never going to develop our faith. And yes, there are times you're waiting. You know, you're waiting and waiting sometimes and waiting and waiting. And, and in that place, you can get real discouraged. I have. It's like, Lord, what's the deal? Why are you taking so long? I don't know why. I just know when it seems like he's not working, he is. He's always working behind the scenes because he watches over his word to perform it. He's faithful and true. He loves us. I love it. We were watching The Chosen last night, and there was a scene in where Nathaniel was under the fig tree, and he had a... a um, 
uh, some architectural design or something that he had for the Lord, and he was crying, and he was so upset, and he's like, Lord, incline your ear to me. Do you not hear me? And he's just, and I'm like sitting there thinking, oh, Lord Jesus, I have been there. And you're, you're, you're just like, God, what is going on, right? And he's just crying, and, you know, he's taking, he burns this thing up, and then he's pouring the ashes on his head, and I'm like, oof. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know if I do that and mess my hair up. But, you know, unless it was good for my hair, bring, gave me some shine or something but you know he's he's just in devastation he's he's just so downhearted and he's so distressed and distraught and you know like god i don't know you know we've been here like god are you real are you there anybody is that ever happened to anybody here right and then what happens is when jesus meets him and nathaniel's real skeptical with uh, i guess i forget who it was philip or somebody was bringing him to jesus and um and jesus told him i saw you sitting under that tree and I heard your cry, and I heard everything you were saying. I mean, it was so ministering to me last night. I'm like, yeah, God, because you're so faithful. You're so good. You're listening to every word that we are saying, everything that we are all crying out to you, oh, God, because you're God. I don't know how you do it, but you're faithful and true. And it was just such a beautiful thing. Listen to this scripture in Proverbs 4, 20 and 22, in the Passion, it says, listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all that I have to say. Listen, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. Isn't that awesome? Fill your thoughts. What are you filling your thoughts with? Are you filling your thoughts with the word? What are you filling your thoughts with? Your thoughts? The lies? The fears? What are you filling your thoughts? Listen, if you're struggling with fear, because I know, because I used to struggle really bad with fear, and, and I have to really, I still have to be really careful, you know, and that's why I meditate on the scriptures regarding fear, and, and it's like there's a supernatural transference that takes place. Remember, for those of us, I was a wee child, but remember Popeye when he would eat his spinach, you know, and he would get all, that's what happens. It's like, whoa, you just feel this empowerment, this dunamis empowerment that takes place. And so pay attention to what you're listening to. Even some of those shows you can be watching that are so violent and so negative or all about it, watch what you're watching. You know, build yourself up with good things, right? Romans 12, 2 says in the Amplified, and do not be conformed to this world, we know this, any longer, with its superficial, talk about superficial values and customs, ideologies that's trying to be, uh, uh, you know, placed on the people of God. I mean, come on, people, we have to take a stand. Enough is enough with some of this critical theory nonsense. And it says here, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what is the will of God and that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. All right, I want to read it to you out of the message. All right, so don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. I'm, a, I'm appalled by some of the things that's in our culture right now. I'm appalled by it. And I'm not just going along with it because that's what the you know, government, whomever, is saying. I'm not. The word has final say. And it says here, all right, don't become so well adjusted, well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. It said, fix your attention on God. Fix your attention, your focus. You'll be changed from the inside out. That's one of the greatest ways is meditating on the word. Don't be critical as you're studying. The Bible says a wise man or woman has a teachable spirit. Yield your spirit, man. So Holy Spirit, what do you want to teach me as I'm meditating on it? Don't, don't get into like a, you know, a, a wrestling match with God. He's God. He's creator. He's our designer. Trust him. Lord, here's what your word is saying. Lord, show me. Open up my heart. And so it says here, fix your, you'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you and he develops well-formed maturity in you. One of the things that word the, the, the Lord has given me is that, um, 
especially in, in where we're going in these end times, I just really felt like the Lord said to be really careful that we don't oppose the Lord's visitation because we don't understand in the way he's moving or, you know, like I have my viewpoint of how God's going to show up, right? I mean, we all have our own thought processes, but he said to be very careful we don't oppose how he's going to move. All right, so that's not nothing to be afraid about. If you're in his presence and you're hearing his voice, then, then you're going you're gonna to flow with him, right? The other thing he said... Everything which gives you your life security that's not from me will be tested. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And I thought, oh, Jesus. And then he said, the wind of the Holy Spirit will uproot and uncover everything. And those who walk in carnality or the flesh will, will mistake many things in human logic and tradition that are not subject to Holy Spirit. So that's the thing. I said, Lord, I know that, you know, the scripture says the violent taketh by force in Matthew 11. He said he's going to do some violence to our traditions. And so I said, Holy Spirit, I'm just asking you to uproot everything in me that's not pleasing to you. Lord, any area of my life, oh God, where I've gotten into tradition and not hearing from you, not flowing, just because it's it's what we know. You know, it's so easy to just go back to what you're familiar with. And I said, Lord, just, I, I said, I give you permission, shine your spotlight. And, and again, not in fear, but it's Lord, Holy Spirit, I just want to watch. Would we, if we were in Jesus's time, think about this again, because I was watching The Chosen. Would we have agreed with Jesus or would we have come against him? Think about it. He's there, he's there on earth. He's saying, I'm the son of God. Because yes. I, I, I was thinking about that last night. I thought, what would I have said? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. You're the son of God, you know? You know, really, I mean, they had to get a revelation from the spirit of the Lord. And that's the thing. I said, Lord, I don't want to be that one. Now, of course, we have to be as the Bereans. We have to know the word. It's our Duty. We have to all study the word to show ourselves approved. We all have to know what the word of God says. Because the devil comes as an angel of light. And if you don't know the word, it's very easy to be deceived. Many are. Many are. So we have to meditate on the word. So we, we, we war with the word. We know the word. But meditating on the word is a little different. When you meditate on the word, I love this scripture. I quote it often. Joshua 1.8, it says... Uh, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that's written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. It's mentioned three times in chapter 1. We have to meditate on the word day and night. Then you will have good success, and you will prosper, right? So we have to spend time thinking about it, meditating on the word. You know, I'll picture myself. I, you know, I was meditating in Deuteronomy where it says that the everlasting arms of the Lord is wrapped around about us. Well, you know, I'm picturing God's arms wrapped around about me, comforting me, strengthening me. You know, we, we are in the vine that, you know, we're, we, it said abide in the vine and that, um, you know, I'm, I'm attached to Jesus and that he's feel his, the oil of Holy Spirit's filling me. You know, I just meditate on certain scriptures that I'll go over and, and just, just allow the, the, the imagination of Holy Spirit to take over. Amen. All right, so then, um, then we have to act on the word. Now, one of the things that I personally believe with all my heart that why I grew so quickly in miracles is by acting on the word. Excuse me. And when I got saved, um, I would just, I remember, I never heard of the prophetic. I never heard of any, I didn't know these terms. But I, if I was in ShopRite or unemployment with my mother, any place that I was, I would always say to the Lord, is there anybody here you want me to talk to? Anybody? And most of the time, I gave people scriptures. I, that's how I started. And then, or else I'd look at a person, I'd see a picture. Or else I would, just constantly doing that, I started seeing people getting healed, miracles happen. That's for all of us. The Bible says in James that we are to become doers of the word. It's not complicated. You don't have to go to 14 years of school of the Holy Spirit. You just do it. You know, you don't have to go to all these different schools. I'm not opposed to them. But what I'm saying is you can get knowledge and get a big fat head 
and that's all you're getting. You have to start doing. You have to start acting. Just step out in faith and ask the Holy all the time, Lord, is there anybody here you want me to pray for? Just, and it doesn't have to be the spirit of the Lord God is upon. No, just you may have a scripture. You may, hey, listen, there have been times that the Lord said to me, I want you to give that person some money. Do it. Obey him. So whatever the Lord's telling you to do, but if you want to activate the miracle working power of God, you have to be a doer of the word. You have to step out. Don't be afraid. So what? You're never going to see the person again. <laughs> just ask them, can I pray for you? Sometimes when I'm, you know, out, I, I you know, I, I, I believe I hear the Lord. Can I pray for you? Most of the people want prayer. They are so open to prayer, right? I mean, it's unbelievable. So act on the word. So in James 1, 22 and 24, and I'm going to bring it to a close. We're going to end early tonight, today. Prove yourself doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts, and not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning, deluding yourself by unsound reasoning contrary to truth. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it, he's like a man who looks carefully at his natural face in the mirror, for once he looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgets, okay? So just act on the word. Be a doer of the word. The other thing I wrote here is praying the spirit. For those of you that are filled, and if you're not filled, we're happy to pray for you. You need to get filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? You build yourself up in the most Holy Ghost. The other thing that I want to say that I think is so important, and, and, and before um, COVID hit, I spoke on this a lot about building our altar of intimacy, we have got to build our altar of intimacy with him. We've, even in, when we're in church, we need to be on our faces here uh, at the altar. We need to, you know, um, understand and, and we need to know that God wants us to, um, you know, just really develop that time. Are you spending time with God every day? That's a privilege we all have. Are you sitting there waiting upon him? They that wait upon the Lord. Your strength shall be renewed like the eagles. Are you sitting and waiting to hear? Listen, you can be in your car. I don't, I'm not going to get religious about it. You can go for a walk and hear the spirit of the Lord. But listen to this scripture in Matthew uh, 11, 28 in the message. It says, are you worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforth, unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay something heavy or ill-fitting on you, or keep comp but just keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Isn't that good? He wants us to learn to live freely and lightly. He wants us to be strong in the Lord. And in Amplified, it says, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him. Be empowered through your union with him in the power of his boundless might. See, this is what God is saying. And so you may say, yeah, but you know what? This is so elementary. I know all this stuff. Well, then do it if you're not. But, but then increase in what you're doing. Because, listen, God is saying to us, get ready for what's ahead. And again, I am not, I'm not preaching fear. I'm just telling you what he said. Get ready for what's ahead. Build your spirit man up. Our spiritual immunity has to be strong. We have got to know how to stand. And when we've done all to stand, stand some more. I'm not going to cower by things or persecution, you know, or that may come our way. But I just know that the word of God is telling us to take a stand. Build your spiritual immunity up. Get in the presence. Decree the word. Meditate on the word. Not like a seven-step plan. It's a relationship plan. He's saying, come to me. Are you burnt out? Are you afraid? Are you struggling in certain areas? He knows our heart. He's not upset with us. He loves us so much. And it's his grace. He's, get away. You'll re How many of you need to have your life recovered? It's been such a stinky time lately. He says, I'll show you how to take this real rest. I'll, I'll show you how to be comforted. And regardless of what you're hearing and seeing, you got the peace, the shalom of God. He's Jehovah Shalom, the wholeness of God. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm doing all I can because the Bible says that, that we have to be ready in season. And now, listen to this scripture in Matthew 7, 13. And this is also from the message. Don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with swift fire 
easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff, even though crowds of people do. The way to life to God is vigorous and requires our total attention. See, this awakening that God is going to call us to, is he, he's awakening the church out of slumbering, out of passivity, out of carnality. He's, he's, he's awakening the church out of fear and discouragement. And he's calling us to walk in revelation that only comes from him. He's standing at the door of our heart and he's knocking. He's saying, come on, this isn't just for the new believer. He goes, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. I want you to go deeper. I know we have situations with family. I know there's health issues. I know we've experienced death. I know many are the afflictions of the righteous, he says. He says, but I'll deliver you, Adam, them all. He says, but listen, come into this deep place. I'm, I'm asking you. I want you to burn for me. I want you to come into this deep place. Don't be so, so, so stinking critical that we're always trying to logically understand God. It's a spirit. It's not a logical thing that we have with God. It's spirit to spirit. And so I want to encourage you. He wants us all to be that Gideon 300 army, that end time army that won't look to the left nor to the right, but we're going to keep our eyes focused on him. Hear the voice of the word of the Lord. We have to get rid of the carnality of anger or bitterness or resentment or, or offense. I'm telling you, this spirit of offense is an accusation, is an end time tool that the enemy is using. And that's where we have to guard our heart. Watch that we don't become like that. And so I, I said, Lord, I just want my heart to be right. But I'm telling you, I'm doing my spiritual calisthenics in, in him where I'm worshiping. That's another thing. Pray in the spirit. We worship. We have a grateful heart. We worship with gratitude because God is so good. And we honor him and we love him. Yes, we have hard times. We've all been through hard times. I've been in a place where I'm like, God, come on. But I chose to keep standing, and I know that's why you're here. I've chose to keep pressing. I've chose to keep worshiping. I chose to keep decreeing the word. Because you know what? The Bible says the devil's under my feet. And the, thing, the thought of him controlling me or being the one that his voice is louder than God's is nauseating. No. The, the logic or the voice of the enemy is not going to be louder than the voice of God in my life. Amen. So I just want to encourage you with this word today that God is on your side. There are the angels of the Lord. You know, this end time vision I had, and I've shared this here before, but I was meditating on it again. He says, I'm raising up an end time army. It's a remnant of people. And what I saw, it was an underground group of people that rose up and everybody had their arms were linked and it was nobody was looking to the left or to the right it was all different nationalities you know and I knew it represented different um, streams of people but it was a group of people that everybody linked arms and we were united force that was coming against the onslaught of the enemy and that's what God is looking for the devil loves for everybody to be pointing their finger accusing each other and this and that I mean come on you know find out facts first before you start accusing people by the way but we have to just watch how we act and what we're saying but know our God and know that God is on our side and so he wants us to be a people that's fortified with empowerment from him with the dunamis power with the ecstasy of power Kratos power that dominion that spirit of might that's who we are we, we war from victory we're more than overcome we're more than conquerors we're overcomers see that's how I see myself I said Lord I thank you that I'm an overcomer why am I an overcomer because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ because I choose to honor the word that's for every single one of us it isn't for any meeny miny mo it's how you see yourself how do you see yourself do you I don't care in your situation what you may be experiencing do you see yourself as a conqueror do you see yourself as over an overcomer a victorious one that's how God sees us and so we need to align with his thought process amen so I'm gonna ask you to stand I just love Jesus. I tell you, I'm so grateful for Jesus in my life. Jesus is the reason for my deliverance. Jesus is the reason that I didn't want to kill myself anymore. Jesus is the reason that I'm not living in fear and discouragement and hopelessness. It was because of Jesus dying on a cross. And I love that song we sing about Jesus because had it not been for him, where would we all be? 
Amen. So all the more, he's saying, listen, you all know, you know where you're at spiritually. I know when I'm not in faith. I know when I'm battling with fear. I know that when I've pulled away or got so distracted, we all have to assess where we're at right now. And so what I'm asking you is that you dialogue with the Lord and ask where you're at. Are you meditating in the word? This isn't condemning. This is just fact. Are you meditating in the word? Are you in his presence? Are you hearing revelation from the spirit of God? Are you? Because then if you're not, it's okay. Then, then start, press into that, build yourself up. It's not too, it's never too late with God, but we can't afford to be passive. We cannot afford to be complacent and carnal because I'm going to just say this, you know, the church at large, and I'm saved a long time, has been in a place of carnality. It's all about, what about me? What about me? I don't want to be offended. Oh my gosh, you know, you know, you got to get coddled all the time. Come on, we got to grow up. We can't stay in that place because you're going to get your behinds kicked in the spirit realm. I'm going to just tell you right now. We can't stay in that place. And I'm not saying we have to be mean or anything like that, but I'm just saying, come on, grow up. I have to grow up. You know, when I start acting like that, it's like we have our little baby temper tantrums. God is like, mm, you know, saying to me, come on, let's knock it off, you know? And so, I, you know, there's the love of God, and we hear about it, but there's also, there's a judgment coming to you. you got to read the whole Bible. And so that's all I'm, I'm just, I just want to admonish you and encourage you. We can't be straddling the fence. You can't be having sex and think it's okay and go to church the next day and say, well, God will forgive me. Listen, you're accountable for what you know. We have to live holy. And it's not a bunch of laws and do's and don'ts. It's when we have this relationship, you don't want to sin. You don't want to. I don't have someone saying to me, you can't do this. You can't. I don't want to. If it's going to grieve my Lord, I don't want to do that. Half the church from what I, under, I, you know, I know, not half the church, a good amount of people. And I'm going to just, I know we're in church on Sunday morning, some young kids here, but people are having sex left and right. It's not okay. It's fornication. The Bible says flee fornication. The Bible talks a lot about anger, unforgiveness. It's not just sex. But, I mean, who are we to make a decision and live the way we want to live? And then we, we get mad at God because we're not getting the results. He says, live holy. He says, for I am holy. Be ye holy. This isn't religious. I don't want to hear all the being all fanatical and religious. Honey, you're either hot or you're cold. But the Bible says if you're lukewarm, he says, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. So we have to take a stand. I didn't say point fingers at people. You need to look at your own life and see where you're all at. Because, listen, God doesn't, there's no measure of sin. God looks at the carnality and the attitudes of our own lives. He looks at the, um, the, the lack of interest. He looks at our hearts as to like, oh, please, here she goes again. Or I don't want to, you know, these people are so ridiculous. No, no, no. If you're going to serve the Lord and you want to see results, then woo. See, Beelzebub, he doesn't like what I'm saying here. <laughs> you have to live a holy life. And we have got to take a stand for righteousness sake. Amen? So you get the point. I need my fly swatter up here. Anyway, so Lord, we just thank you for your amazing love. And Lord, we know that whom you love, you discipline. And God, all of us, listen, you're speaking to me, to everybody else. I'm not speaking at anybody. But we have to all look at our lives, where we're at. And Lord, we do. We humble ourselves. Listen, if you want to humble yourself and just say, Lord, here I am. I'm just surrendering. Just come to the altar. We, we're not going to lay hands on you. But if, if you want to do that, come on up. You don't have to. You can stay in your seat. But come on, let's make use of the altar. And Lord, we just thank you that you're faithful and true. God, Please forgive us where we have lived carnal, uh, carnal life or in passivity. And listen, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, come on up. If you have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we want to give you an opportunity to pray with you. It's never too late. If there's anyone here 
that you want to rededicate your life or get saved, come on up. If everyone's saved, that's fine. But Lord, we love you. And we thank you that you love us. And Lord, you're, you just love us so much that you want our hearts to be aligned with you. And Lord, you're not yelling at us. You're willing to bring us into this place and you'll take us by the hand and guide us through because you want so much for us to live a successful prosperous life in you so lord i bless each and every one i thank you that you'll give him revelation of your amazing love that you have for each and every one of us here and god i just ask that you reveal yourself in a way that they have never experienced before Lord, we thank you that you're a God of signs, wonders, and miracles. Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for cleansing the leopard. We thank you that you're a God who raises the dead, who raises dead, dead, or dead situations. So Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your presence. I bless each and every person here today. Enjoy your day. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.